thank you, Jess, for joining me on ADHD Girls YouTube channel. And it's really nice to have you on here. And I know we've been talking about doing this for months now. And so I'm glad that it's finally happening. <music> So can I start by asking you your name and what you do and how old you were when you were diagnosed with ADHD? Yes, so um, my name's Jess. Um, I'm 27 and I got my diagnosis for my ADHD in January of this year. Um, and I have my own dog walking and animal care business. Right, and what led you to pursue an ADHD diagnosis? Was there any struggles you had living with ADHD? I mean, all my life, I have generally sort of gone like this. It's just been moments of real highness and then suddenly out of the blue, real, real lows. Mm. And I think it got to the point where I was sort of a bit like, you know, I'm 27. I still don't really know what's going on, but I'm just not happy. Like something's not not right. Um, and... I just sort of thought if I don't do this now, you know, I'm gonna, I think a big motivation for me weirdly was the thought of being a mum. I just sort of thought if I can't understand how I'm feeling at the minute, you know, the last thing I sort of wanted to happen was for me to, for that to get pushed aside with like the next thing that would, you know, eventually sort of happen for me in my life. Um, And I think that was sort of quite a big bit of motivation for me I just thought you know if I don't do it now I'm, I'm probably not going to get the opportunity to do it because and and as well for me I think a big confidence thing for me was that I sort of really wanted to just try and get a grip of whatever this was um before becoming a mum just so it you know it was a nice experience for everyone if that makes sense yeah I, I completely get it also because it's great that you have found out because uh, we know that, you know, ADHD affects women of all ages. And typically there is the effects of hormones on the ADHD. So yeah. we find that the transition where a woman goes through like motherhood and perimenopause and, you know, and all that, you know, has an impact on the woman, you know. So it's good that you found out right now. And uh, what exactly were the struggles that you had living with ADHD? Was it a particular thing that made you feel like, you know, perhaps that, you know, life wasn't going the way that you thought it was going? It was weird. Like, like I say, I seemed to have this pattern of things would be fine and, you know, life would just keep plodding on and then things would just suddenly come to a halt and it was like, the only way I can describe it is that I almost felt like I just needed to stop everything like everything suddenly became overwhelming things that you know I'm I things that I'd been doing all my life just became too much of a thing and I couldn't cope with things um and it got to the point where I just thought again like am I having some mid I genuinely thought I was having like a breakdown I genuinely thought like yeah like am I having a breakdown because it is it, is it normal for someone my age to be struggling with life? And that's how I felt. I felt really like, what is wrong with me? Um, you know, the simplest of things sometimes felt like such a hurdle. Um, and I think it just got to a point where that had happened so often in my life that I thought this is just going to keep going on and on and on. And I didn't want it to, to keep happening um, because it's quite scary. Like, when I had these these lows it was really like you know you sort of think how am I gonna I, you know all right I've got this far I'm 27 but I don't know if I can do another 27 years of it being like this um so I think really that um was kind of again it, I just sort of happened to keep going through these patterns where I thought something's got to give yeah no so when you have ADHD one of the definition of it is is that you are chronically overwhelmed right and so I think that might actually make a woman feel you know even if they don't know they have ADHD that you know how can something that other people seem to be dealing with it okay give you so much overwhelm you know and then you question yourself don't you absolutely and it's it's really scary because 
you know, obviously everyone, you know, everyone gets stressed. That's life, unfortunately. But like you say, that chronic feeling of like, you know, the the simplest of things, it's like, why can't I do this? Like, why am I getting so upset doing all these little things, you know? And sometimes you do them and it would be absolutely fine. Um, but other times it was just like, why, why am I struggling so much? I just don't understand. Mm. Um, and it is, it's, you know, like you say, I think it's just so to be inside your own head when you're sort of in that headspace, it can be quite frightening. That's right. And also it's not something that you can see, it's invisible. And a lot of women manage to mask it when they're at work or, you know, on the outside with friendships, but it is what's going on in internal life you know, and the people closest to you who live with you, who gets to see who, you know, and how, how it affects you. Yeah, definitely. And again, even, you know, I don't know if it's similar for you, but it's so difficult sometimes trying to verbalize how you feel. Yeah. Um, and, or, you know, you might explain it, but then people are looking at you like, I don't feel like that. I don't get that. Like, why do you feel like that? And then you think, what's wrong with me? Like, I just, you know, yeah. Have I, you know, is there something maybe more going on that I'm not aware of? Um, So, yeah. And uh, what do you feel? Because we know that ADHD is quite stigmatized and there is a general misunderstanding or you know, a woman with ADHD might feel misunderstood. So what do you think the biggest misunderstanding is with regards to ADHD in women? I think, unfortunately, and I hold my hands up, that before I had my ADHD diagnosis, I was just one of those people that was like, it's not a thing. Um, You know, it's just an excuse for parents when they can't be bothered with their kids. I genuinely used to say that to people. Like I even said it to my partner. I was like, I just don't buy into it. It's a load of, you know, it's a load of rubbish. And then lo and behold, I get diagnosed with ADHD. And it was it was a really like hard pill to swallow because I thought they've definitely got that wrong. And it wasn't until I started educating myself that I thought, you know, it almost like smacked me in the face. And because I'd never sort of envisioned that that's what it was, at first it was very like, no, you know, it's not that. But I just think there's generally such a stigma, unfortunately, that comes with the whole ADHD thing. Um, And it's a shame because I think it can make you feel quite closed off. I know that it obviously portrays very differently um, in males and females, but I think it is just, it's such a shame that the general stigma is that naughty boy syndrome at school, which, you know, I'm embarrassed to say, but that is exactly what I thought. I thought, oh, you know, it's a load of the teachers and parents that can't be bothered. And Mm -hmm. it's a shame really, because even, you know, for those people that I probably judged for having it once upon a time, Mm -hmm. it's not right to do it. Mm-hmm. um but yeah it's it's really difficult it's a I'm, I'm surprised a lot of people do actually you know some of the people that I've told I have ADHD people either seem to be very clued up on it or they're just like they've they've never heard of it they don't know what it is and I think it's there's such a divide in society of oh okay yeah I know what ADHD is you know oh that's really difficult or it's like isn't that just naughty boy syndrome? And it's a bit like, oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I completely get it. Like, I think they don't mean any harm, but, you know, by saying things like that actually invalidates you, like, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. What, I, I know that you recently started medication uh, yeah. after being on a waiting list uh, for the titration. How's it going for you? It has been really, really lovely. Um, I was really anxious about going on meds. Um, I naturally will not take medication for anything. Like even if I've got a splitting headache, I just will not. I I don't know what it is. I think I do have like an anxiety about medication, but I think in my head, I was just so fed up of living how I've been living and not really getting anywhere that I thought if I don't give this a go, I could potentially you know, I'm not really giving myself a fair chance. Um, I had no expectations about the medication. I was very like, 
let's just see what happens and like honestly from day one when I started on 20 milligrams it made such a difference it really did make such a difference in my day-to-day life and I sort of thought oh you know maybe it's just starters luck but generally I I feel like I've had a really good run with it um so I'm glad I'm glad I sort of persevered with it and got over my anxiety of the meds but it's been really really good for me so far and what are the differences that you notice being on medication so for me personally um I suffer really badly with social anxiety um I'm not I'm not overly you know I'm quite happy being at home with you know my close friends and family but before being on medication and before getting the ADHD diagnosis, even that sometimes could be clinically unbearable. Um, it was just, you know, it. I used to, if I, if I wasn't in the right headspace for seeing someone, I think I used to struggle hiding it. Mm-hmm. Um, but since being on the medication, I just have no fear. Like. And it's, it's such a nice feeling because I actually feel like I'm listening to people and I feel like I'm engaging with people. And it's something that I never thought I'd be able to do. Um, so it that's a really, really big positive for me, just to be in someone's company and actually be present. Mm-hmm. Um, I generally find like making a decision a lot easier. I always faff about it all you know I'm always like oh I don't know what to do shall I do this shall I do that and when my medication's like at its peak I guess it's just a this is what I'm doing and I do it um so it saves a lot of time in the day because I'm not faffing about as much um and just generally I I feel brighter I feel happier I don't know if that's because you know, I'm getting things done. Um, my days are going and they're more structured and they're going more to how I want them to go. So it's making me feel better. Um, and again, I think even the fact of me having, you know, like a proper conversation with someone, I think that also, I don't, I never know if it's like actually the meds or if it's like a bit of a placebo, but I've, I've just generally noticed I feel much happier and lighter. Mm-hmm. And is it the same as because I'm not on medication yet, but I have drank some really good coffee, you know, and sometimes yeah. when, when that happens, you just feel like all the stars are aligned and your thoughts are yeah. just so acute, you know, you could just like hit the nail on the, the, the problem at the head. Does it feel like that? Or you just direct? It, solve yeah, it, it does. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a really weird feeling. Like for me, I... I, so I always take my meds at about half eight in the morning um, and it's always by about half 10, 11, like a good maybe two hours after I've taken them, I can literally like feel myself sort of like, oh, okay, we're waking up now. And I mean, it's not like a physical, you know, you're not high or anything, but I can feel myself just getting ready, if that makes sense. It sort of feels like I'm really, like you say, that the stars are aligned a little bit and it's just like right let's go get them let's go and have today and it's it is you sort of walk around with like a bit of a spring in your step um and yeah it is a bit like having that that morning fix of like a coffee or a strong cup of tea it's like right I'm ready to sort of tackle tackle the day now well it, it sounds like it's worked out really brilliant for you you know and and it's happened so quickly as well because I know you know the, the minute you started taking it and then your doses just gradually increased and you have some positive effects so I'm really glad for you thank and, you uh, other than medication are there any other strategies that you use to manage you know g- given that you have lived with di- a undiagnosed ADHD for 27 years it's difficult really um I mean I think I will in the future be investing in having some private coaching. Um, Part of me is like, do I need it? But I think for me, I'm very habitual. So I think in my head, I don't need it. But I know I don't think I don't do things probably, you know, the easiest that things could be done. So I do think definitely for sort of like, and especially because I run my own business, I do think coaching for that will really help um but it's really difficult because I think 
I think I've just lived with it for so long that I kind of am stuck in my ways a little bit um I do really feel like the medication for me has it has been life-changing um and I don't know like I'm very sort of again no expectations in terms of what coaching will do if I learn stuff then that's great but it's so difficult to to change the way you do things and I'm I'm more aware of the way I do things now since getting the diagnosis but I am a bit you know like I am a bit of a plain Jane if I if something works for me I just do it that way um so I don't know really I th- I'd say really it's I am definitely going to hope to in the future sort of have some private coaching because I think that will help and then I think that with the combination of medication hopefully it should it should be better and by coaching do you mean ADHD coaching or something yeah. more specific oh okay yeah, yeah. So I am currently the other way around. I have ADHD coach, but not medication. And I think that's my kind of, you know, the only management strategy, given that, you know, I tell people to do exercises, but I don't do it enough, you know, Um, and also some other uh, methods of self-medication, which is chocolate and, you know, coffee every now and then but uh well I'm, I'm glad that you found you know the way that works for you and what advice would you give someone who thinks that maybe they have ADHD but do not see the point in getting diagnosed I think if I sort of think when I look back on some of my you know like core memories of life I if I could sort of go back and say to myself you know you know do push it is that you know your own mind and I think this is one of the problems that I had within myself um I just constantly felt like a burden I constantly felt like you know I was boring my GP I was boring my best friend I was boring my mum I was boring my sister and you're not like you're not a bore at all and if you genuinely think that there is something not quite right you you deserve you deserve answers and I think especially for women we are so easily parred off with oh it's your hormones oh it's anxiety oh it's depression and and sometimes it is but sometimes it's not and I think it makes me cross that there's a I think it sort of comes across that there's a one size fits all in society Um, especially when it comes to sort of mental health and mental well-being when it's not the case like we're all so different so why why are our brains not any different you know Um, and I think yeah you, you know you know yourself better than anyone so if you really sort of think that you know no I do want I do want that to be looked at or no I don't think it's that go for it because I wish I'd have been braver to do that years ago Wow. But you know, it's it's not entirely your fault. Because if there wasn't a pandemic, then you wouldn't even have, you know, such a huge change in your life circumstances to make you question your, your mental health. And, and I think, you know, with the COVID-19, that's where a lot of women find that they were suddenly at the loose end and you know, the situation that they're in uh, is not something that they can handle anymore. You know, and, and yeah, so... Um, the awareness has also grown in the last year, you know, which helps a lot of other women, you know, to then, you know, pursue their own diet. Yeah. And once that happened, we realized that the proportion of people who have ADHD are so much higher than what the statistics says, because yeah. there's a lot of undiagnosed ADHD and some people live to their 60s or 70s, not knowing that. And yeah, so what, 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 what you have done here, talking about your story will, will help someone else. Oh, I hope yeah, so. Story as well. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for sharing your insight today. And uh, if anyone's watching this and if you want to come ahead and um, talk about your ADHD story, please feel free to get in touch. Oh, thank you. Thank you for chatting with me.